Oh boy, where do I start? So, making an animated series on YouTube is kinda hard, or at least harder than I thought. I was making some behind the scenes progress on episode 2 of Ben 1 last time, but I ran into a couple road bumps along the way and thought I would share with you a few of the things I've done in pre-production to improve my animation. I know in my last video I made it sound like I had all this stuff figured out. I'm gonna animate this Ben 10 fan series in Photoshop. It's gonna be fun, right? Then I started to think to myself. I really can't put myself through that again. The multiple layers. The timeline. The horrible paint bucket tool. It was not good. And not gonna lie, I kind of panicked and thought I was going to need to relearn animation entirely. And in a lot of ways, I kind of did. And here's how. I was having this problem where my drawings were feeling really flat and my character's movements were super stiff. While this fortunately didn't truly affect the story of episode 1, it really bothered me as someone who wanted to be an animator. I can't have an intense animated action show of people just standing around and talking to each other. So the first animation software I ever used was Adobe Flash. RIP which has really been a staple on the internet for a lot of animators. Only the drawing tools at the time were not what I was used to. I couldn't get my lines to look right, and I was way too impatient with the learning process, which is what inevitably sent me back to Photoshop in the first place. So for episode 2 of Ben One Last Time, I wanted to make the jump to Toon Boom Harmony. They actually used the nicest version of the software to animate shows like The Pickle Rick Show and A hey, Bader, so it's gotta have some perks. But if I was struggling with Adobe Flash, how would I know if I was ready for this? As much as it really sucked, I was comfortable with my current drawing program and editing those drawings in my video software, which was difficult and really complicated, but was still doable. Why couldn't it be as simple as that? Well, after doing some research, I found out it kind of is. There's so many resources out there to learn Toon Boom Harmony, and I didn't really know where to start, so I just kind of took what I knew about Adobe Flash and tried applying it here. So I began animating an opening scene from Episode 2, where Ben receives his new Omnitrix from Azmuth. This was sort of my first attempt at using the software, and I immediately started making all the wrong decisions. In fact, my efforts to accelerate my animation was actually hurting my productivity. And at the end of it, they were still standing and talking at each other. Let me give you an example. For instance, in this scene, I tried to put all of the drawings I would ever need for Ben inside one symbol for each part of the body, so I could just change them out depending on the pose he needed to be in. Sounds pretty easy, right? Wrong. In fact, I made more work for myself trying to draw arms that would look good in every angle, so I could just switch to that arm and not have to draw it. You see how convoluted this is? Ugh. So needless to say, I was ready for a brand new approach, but it would take more time than I was really allowing myself to learn. Although right before I get into what I did to take things to the next level, I really quick want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped, for supporting the channel. Because not only are videos like these possible because of them, but they also sent me a really nice package that you've got to check out. Manscaped hooked me up with a bunch of tools and formulations from their all-in-one performance package kit, and I've got to say, this is really nice stuff. As someone who frequently locks themselves in a room and stares at a drawing tablet all the time, it's nice to get one of those packages that you can pull yourself right back into feeling top of your game. I'm excited to try out the new Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology which reduces nicks and cuts. And you're not going to believe this, but Manscaped even created a ball deodorant called Crop Preserver and a ball toner spray. This is a game changer. Introducing the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. That nose hair is great and all, but not when you can practically braid it, so this will come in handy for you. And of course, Manscaped did not fall short of thinking of your toes and nails too. Check out the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Kit. I'm telling you, if you get this package, you're gonna feel taken care of. It's real nice. And let me tell you, the fun does not end there. For a limited time, you get all of this, plus two free gifts the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Boxer Briefs. Gotta say, they're pretty comfy. Support the channel and treat yourself by going to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use the promo code Xander at manscaped.com. Click the link in the description below, support the channel, and I'm sure your balls and body will thank you. Once again, thanks to Manscaped so much for sponsoring this video. Okay, so, so far the moral of the story is 
take the time to learn this stuff before you get right into it. And there actually have been a few key things I had to experience before I could tell I was moving in the right direction. First thing I had to nail down was getting better at drawing in the software and figuring out how to use the tools more efficiently. I drew up some character concepts for Gwen and Kevin as they will show up very soon in the show, which I'll talk about more in a future video. I wanted to find a better way to practice while not drastically setting myself behind on content for the channel because as important as making this series is, I do not want to get stuck and stop making videos altogether. So I thought, hey, I haven't done a reboot transformation in a while, why don't I do that? Since I had taken the time to do more research and watch more videos that could help me, I better started to understand the importance of doing the hard work, rather than just trying to find shortcuts that would make it easier. Establishing keyframes, making solid in-betweens, and integrating some new tweening functions that I had not been using properly before. <laughs> Something that I need a lot more work on, I would say, is my timing. It's not always perfect, in some frames you can pause and maybe look a little weird, but overall, this was a massive breakthrough for me. I was feeling more confident in my ability to add more dynamic movements and have them move a lot more smoothly, so naturally I wanted to hop back into Ben one last time to prove to myself I had actually made some great progress. I thought that animating an intro for the series would be a good idea, an intro that in a few seconds told the viewer about two aspects of the show that are reoccurring. An older Ben who is dealing with some of the decisions that he made when he was younger, and some of those decisions he's still paying for. So step one, the dreaded walk cycle. I'll be the first to admit I'm far less interested in taking my time on things that don't immediately play into what I'm working on, so I had never done something as fundamental as a proper walk cycle. So of course, I just jumped right into making him run. Run real fast, and actually adding a dynamic camera angle to it to make him look like he's getting larger the further he reaches. This did have its own set of challenges, but after tweaking it a certain amount, it ended up looking pretty good, and I was happy and ready to move on to the next step. I already felt like I was a little pressed for time in getting a video out, so I was really worried about making this effect work. Inside the Omnitrix during these classic transformation sequences, there's this really cool bubble effect that's in the background, and I knew for a fact I was going to need to recreate that. So I got right to work on doing that, and it was actually a bit more fun than I thought it was going to be. I kind of thought that animating just people was going to be the best way to just spend my time, but Animating effects in the background gave me the most control over the entire scene. And the rest was pretty much downhill from there. I did animate a silhouette of him spinning around in that space. And after that was all done, I took it into After Effects, added some cool glowing, some lighting, and it ended up looking really great, which is a whole other avenue to go down for another video. So I'll get into that later. And lastly, we have this cool shot of Ben spinning around with fire behind him. It's very epic. And I wanted to give everyone the impression that Ben means business. I mean, look at this guy. He's going to he's going to punch you right in the face. I mean, this is what you see right before you die. Truth be told, I do think that there are things that I could improve about this intro and maybe I will. I think maybe the perspective on Ben running could use a little bit of work and I also really want to include an opening scene in the title sequence that kind of establishes we're in an alternate timeline where this Ben at 10 years old would get his own Omnitrix and it would look a little bit different and stuff. I also want to make a few other videos uh, creating aliens that would fit in this series so I'm not sure exactly what that looks like yet. I don't want to spoil too much for episode 2 but maybe post episode 2 there would be some videos dedicated to creating aliens specifically for this series, what they might look like. That would be a lot of fun, so definitely let me know what you guys think about that in the comments below. And last, but certainly not least, since the first episode of Ben One Last Time came out, you guys have been sending me some amazing fan art on Instagram for the project, and I just wanted to highlight it here. Uh, there's some really talented folks, and it would be awesome to support them for supporting me. So, if you guys want a chance to be featured here in upcoming videos, feel free to Give me a follow on Instagram and tag your fan art with hashtag Ben one last time so that I can find it. I also really want to know what your thoughts are on this new video format. I'm trying something different, trying to keep you guys more engaged with the behind the scenes process of this project. So that means I don't exactly have a definite date for episode two, but I plan on keeping you guys 100% in on the loop of what's going on. So like I said, follow me on Instagram and before too long, I will see you guys next time.